Hello everyone and welcome back to Amateur Astronomy and Storm Tracing. Now in today's video, since it's way outside and a little bit more on that here in a little bit, I figured what I'd do is I'm just going to go over everything from my astrophotography setup from top to bottom. I've had a bunch of guys asking me here lately just about different uh, pieces of my setup and I'm going to link every single piece in the description below so that way you guys can go down there and check that out and just see you know, what you think for yourself. And uh, also at the end I'm going to post just a bunch of the pictures I've taken with this exact setup right here. Also if you guys haven't yet, please be sure to subscribe down below and like the video, share the video with your friends, you know, people that you think may be interested in uh, astronomy and astrophotography and things like that. Alright, so first things first, ever since my uh, Super Blood Moon Eclipse video, it's done nothing but rain here in Middle Tennessee. Uh, we're in about mid-February right now, and actually over the next seven days we're expecting anywhere from eight to possibly even over nine inches of rain, which is just an absolute staggering amount of rain for this area. So possibly uh, come this weekend, be on the lookout for a flood video because things, things are probably going to start going downhill here uh, after Tuesday. So I think we'll go ahead and start with the base of the mountain here, and that is of course the tripod. Now I got really lucky with this tripod right here. I actually went into Goodwill a few months ago and this thing was just sitting there for five dollars. And now it is by no means the end all be all of tripods, but it is pretty sturdy. It does have some pretty thick legs on it and so far it has worked flawlessly. So as far as me recommending tripods, I gotta say probably go with Manfrotto tripods, which I've actually linked down in the description below because I've always heard good things about those. Alright, so the next part of this setup is obviously the Skywatcher Star Adventure. Now, I went with the Star Adventure because at first I went with the uh, Skywatcher Dobsonian Telescope and I kind of want to stay brand specific here. And I've always heard good things about the Star Adventure, so I went with that. And actually now, you can buy the, I think it's called the Star Adventure Pro Package, which comes with literally everything that you need to get started. The Star Adventure itself is a really capable little mount. My only complaint with it is the polar scope illuminator that comes with it. So the polar scope illuminator leaves a lot to be desired. It sometimes it only works whenever it really wants to, and that's maybe half the time. Now this mount here actually runs off four AA batteries, and so far it seems like the battery life on it is amazing. I've only uh, changed them out one time and not ran into any issues with that. And then, yeah, this thing just has a lot of neat features here. Like as you can see here on the side, it's got this dial. Uh, you can do things like uh, time lapses, you can do solar tracking, you can do lunar tracking, uh, star tracking, obviously. But yeah, overall, I highly recommend the Star Adventure mount. I know that you'll be pleased with it, especially if you're just now jumping into the hobby because it's got literally everything that you need to really learn your way around equatorial mounts. Yeah, overall, I'm just, I love this little thing. It's definitely a workhorse. So the Star Adventure Pro Package pretty much comes with absolutely everything you're going to need. The one thing that you will have to order separately is this ball head adapter here. Uh, this is the iTron ball head adapter. I will also link that in the description down below. And this thing right here is absolutely amazing. So obviously attached to the top of my ball head adapter here is my Canon Rebel T3i. Now I actually do most of my shooting on the T5i, which I'm filming with right now, but I have used the T3i as well. Now I've just shot with Canon my entire life, so it's just kind of the brand that I've always kind of gravitated towards. Now I bought this lens used right here, which I is something I'm usually kind of against, but I figured, hey, you know, I go ahead and give it a shot, and I think I got this lens for something like eighty dollars or something like that, and I've definitely gotten my eighty dollars worth of use out of it. Like this thing has been fantastic right here. Uh, Picture-wise, you know, whenever you're zoomed out all the way to three hundred millimeters, you're not going to get the absolute best pictures out there. But again, for a budget-friendly setup like this, this thing right here is an absolute monster. Like I, I cannot be happier with spending eighty dollars and getting pictures, you know, like I've been getting. So I'm sure you guys have noticed also this little attachment here on the end of my lens. This is actually my new dew heater right here. So this is a Protage dew heater right here, and all it does is just wrap around the end of your lens right here, and it just keeps dew and condensation from forming. And so far, this thing has worked phenomenally. And again, for eighteen dollars, all it is. Uh, just a little USB cord here as you can see. It just plugs into a uh, portable battery. That's usually what I always use with it. And yeah, this thing, it heats up really quickly and it doesn't really seem to drain the battery that fast either. So yeah, for, for as cheap as this is right here, I can highly recommend this. And again, I've got that link down below so you guys can also check that out as well. Now this dew heater has been one of the most helpful things I've actually bought 
to help make my photos look better because deer condensation is one thing that I've always fought with and this thing right here has just made all the difference in the world. So I can highly recommend this little bad boy. And finally here, what really brings all this together is my intercolometer. Now again, this is this the cheap one off of Amazon, newer, newer, I believe is the brand, I think that's how you pronounce that. Yeah, this thing right here has been absolutely amazing. Yeah, this thing only takes two AAA batteries to power it. I've still actually got the two same batteries that I've had the whole time in it. And yeah, this thing, it's just really easy to use. It's actually got a little light on it so you can see it outside you know, in the dark. It's super easily set up so you can kind of work your way around it. And it's just really easy to figure out also. Yeah, this thing's been amazing. And you can take as many pictures as you want to on it. I know that a lot of these have got limits. You know, you can only take, say, 300 photos or something like that, but this thing actually has an infinity setting. So, you know, if you're doing a time lapse, a sunset, or something like that, you can take just absolutely as many photos as you want to with this. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this whole setup right here. I know you guys can see, you know, I've kind of got wires hanging all over the place, and I've just kind of got stuff sitting here. But my idea is I'm just going to get some Velcro and stick to the backs of these things right here. So I'm just literally just Velcro them to the mount right here and just go off and leave it be. Yeah, again, you know, this is not an end-all, be-all astrophotography setup by no means. I'm super happy with it. I'm really happy with the results I've gotten from it. One thing that I'm really excited to get is a, a mount with go-to capabilities. Because of one thing with this mount right here that is, it can either make or break your night, is finding the object that you're trying to photograph in the viewfinder. You know, you just have to sit there and literally just manually move the camera around looking for it. And sometimes that can take anywhere from 15 minutes, you know, if you get really lucky. Sometimes I never find it. Sometimes, you know, I end up packing up for the night, you know, getting, getting upset, just going in for the night. But, you know, again, like I said, this is just a intro setup for somebody that's just new to the hobby. You know, you go out maybe once or twice a month like that. It's a fantastic setup for that. But the one thing about, you know, like I said, manually moving the camera around, looking for your object, whenever you do finally find that object and the first frame pops up, it's honestly one of the best feelings in the world. Yeah, I can highly recommend absolutely all this stuff right here to you guys. And so far, you know, I, I love, I've loved every second of it. I've kind of butted ahead, you know, with manually finding things in the viewfinder here, but you know, that's just part of it sometimes. It's a hobby of patience for sure. But yeah, that's about it for this video right here. Again, be sure to hang around because at the end of the video, I'm gonna post a bunch of the pictures I've taken with this exact setup right here. So again, you guys can kind of expect, you know, exactly what you can get with this setup. Also, be sure to subscribe, hit the like button and the notification button down below. And as always, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy.